So we have a really <laughs> bad habit of giving each other's phone numbers out to people. And so oh, we totally, oh, we totally shouldn't do that. We totally shouldn't do that. But yeah, we have a really bad habit. Like if we know that, that we've got like a super fan and they would, and you know, like if they're wanting to talk to us and they just won't leave us alone, we'll tell them, we'll be like, well, you should call, you know, here's Tyler's phone number. You can call him and talk to him. everybody welcome back to a new episode of between you and me the place where we talk to music makers about the things that hurt heal and change us in the church thank you so much for your support following our last episode with nathan sheridan i appreciate it i appreciate you backing our future episodes as we share so many incredible stories with you I love the fact that sharing stories and having quote unquote real talk, which is real, um, can really bring unity among people, the church, exvangelicals, evangelicals, rock stars, rebels, you name it. Um, I love the, well, I believe that table of God is open for everybody. And the cool thing about music is that it transcends differences and actually brings us to that table. I love that these conversations do that. So I want to say thank you for believing in Between You and Me. Thank you for believing in our episodes and thank you for supporting us. Today we have a wonderful episode with a really iconic bluegrass band called Chosen Roads. Now, Chosen Road have had like multiple charting singles. They have charted in the bluegrass charts multiple times, and they're starting to be recognized now in Christian music, which is really cool because Chosen Road was actually formed out of a bunch of men who wanted to share the love of bluegrass and merge it really overtly with their love for Jesus. That's where Chosen Road came from. It's this band that was founded by Jonathan Buckner, who we're going to be talking to today, which was founded in about 2009 in the coal fields of West Virginia. And I don't know if anyone else read the books like Christy or watched that VHS series back in the day. When I heard the Appalachian Mountains, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the sound of that area. I'm so excited. I fully geeked out like an Aussie. It was great. Uh, And... Jonathan has such a passion for small town America and I use that term not in like a minimizing way I use it in an empowering way where people are just doing their thing every day they are living and they are working and they are pushing and they are supporting their families and they are making things work when there's so much hopelessness when industry closes down or when there's recession Um, and I love that Chosen Road represents the average person. They represent the person who is in the midst of everyday life, trying to live out their faith and do it well. And they give it a voice to that and a sound to that. That's part of the reason I was so excited to chat with Jonathan Buckner today. Now, the band released an album earlier this year, which has had so much success. Uh, And meanwhile, we also chat about their partnership with a Southern Baptist Convention board for helping like regrow churches in America. Now, the, working with the Southern Baptist denomination is not something I'm familiar with. I grew up in the Salvation Army, and actually, if anyone knows about the history of the Salvation Army, which is a church, heads up, um, we actually really advocate for like the equality of females and males on stage and in platform ministry. And so for me, sort of entering into the realm of, oh, the Southern Baptist ministry, while I know that's quite common and well-known in the States, it wasn't for me um, to actually meet a band member who has sort of grown up in that tradition and really celebrates it and sees God move through it was really cool for me. It was really eye-opening and um, I love seeing how God moves through different people and different denominations and Jonathan's stories about how Chosen Road's music has then partnered with what God is doing in these small churches that are struggling to hold on is really powerful and really encouraging. I'm really looking forward to you hearing that. Now we will get straight into this episode my friends. You're about to hear the who, what, when, where, why of Chosen Road and then we'll get straight into this interview. Meet Jonathan Buckner. If you were to combine the sound of small town America with the beauty of the Appalachian Mountains and the familiarity of the church you grew up in, 
you would hear Chosen Road. Comprised of founding member Jonathan Buckner, along with Zachary Alvis, Tyler Robertson and Josh Hicks, the bluegrass and folk quartet from Southern West Virginia have sung songs about their saviour since 2009, not just gaining rapport in Christian music, but garnering a faithful following in the secular bluegrass charts. Now, as the story goes, founding member Jonathan Buckner and his friends became world-class bluegrass musicians, playing and recording over many years. But they decided to match their love of the genre with their passion for the gospel and Chosen Road was formed in 2009. They had a focus on performing in small towns and empowering local churches. They released their first recorded single, Handful of Weeds, in 2015, and it was followed by their 2016 album, War to Grace. The album Storm and Me came in 2018. Now, in 2019, they were asked to create a track to support churches doing it tough. And they created the song International Harvest Star, which has continues to impact people today. In 2020, Chosen Road reached new heights in their career. Their album Appalachian Holiday saw Chosen Road reach new heights in their career, reaching number four on Billboard's Top Bluegrass Albums chart. And they stayed on the charts for 30 weeks. The next year, their project Appalachian Hymns stayed on the Bluegrass Album Billboard charts top 10 for eight weeks. Now, over the course of their career, Chosen Road have acquired six top 10 bluegrass radio singles. They've performed nationally and internationally. They've built a reputation for their musicality and faithfulness and shared the stage with people like Doyle, Lawson, Quicksilver, Daly and Vincent and the Isaacs. Signing as a flagship artist to Thoroughbred Records, their latest album, It Never Gets Old, debuted at number four on the bluegrass charts and their first single, I Want To Be Just Like You, reached number one on the Ross Gospel radio charts. In all this, Chosen Road partners with the North American Mission of Board's Church Replan and Revitalization team. And because of this, their new album includes the track One Willing Soul, penned to support small town pastors often struggling to keep the doors of their church open. With growing acclaim in Christian music, Chosen Road recently performed at CMA Fest and Michigan's Hit Ticket Festival headlined by Zach Williams and Crowder. They also played at the 40 Days and 40 Nights Ark Encounter concert. I spoke to Jonathan about the origin of Chosen Road, their passion for encouraging small churches, and why the band's heart is always in the coalfields of West Virginia. Friends, it is my delight to introduce you to Jonathan Buckner of Chosen Road. Welcome to the Between You and Me podcast, Jonathan. Thank you so much for coming as part, as representing Chosen Road. It's so good to have you here. Thank you, Jessica. It's a joy to be here. Now, as we said, you're based in West Virginia. I think you're my first guest based on location in West Virginia. So congratulations. I can like scratch wow, another state off the map. Yes. Yeah, that's a big deal, man. I'm honored. You, you should. You should be very honored. I'm excited personally. I'm like, I have a friend in West Virginia now. This is great. So you do, I, would you like, do. I would like to know. Um, Chosen Road has been around for ooh, over a decade now. Um, you've been very successful. Your last album reached number four on the Christian Bluegrass, oh, on the Bluegrass album charts. Sorry, I'm just catching up on what Brian said here. Congratulations. It's a huge deal. Um, I, I would love to know for people who are just meeting you or perhaps are fans but want to meet you in your own words, who is, what is Chosen Road? So Chosen Road, at its core, stripped down, everything taken away, it's just a group of guys that love Jesus, love each other, and we love the music that we all grew up playing here in the mountains of Appalachia, Southern West Virginia. Um, it's where the band is based out of. I was born and raised here. When I remember some of my earliest memories, um, our fiddles and banjos playing and people singing in church. And so Chosen Road, if you take all the traveling away and you take all the cool stuff that we get to do away. We're just a group of guys that love Jesus, love each other and love the music. I love that. And in the midst of all that, you are a founding member of the band. So who is Jonathan Buckner in your own words? <laughs> yeah. So Jonathan Buckner is um, just a guy from West Virginia that grew up here and is just super privileged and blessed to be able to play music um when i grew i grew, like i said i grew up in a in an area where the type of music that we play i mean it was everywhere um everyone around me played grew up playing in church and i always loved music but never would have dreamed in a million years that as an adult um that it would turn into a career um and it's just amazing we've been doing it for 14 years and 
every week when we go get on a bus or if we get on a plane to go somewhere, I'm just amazed at the fact that God allows somebody like me, a sinner saved by grace. There's absolutely nothing special about me. The only good thing in me, about me is the fact that I have Jesus living inside of me. And uh, yeah, so I, I feel like that I live every day just in amazement at how good God is and the fact that he allows me to, to do what I do and live the life I live. So good. So can you tell me, obviously Chosen Road has been around since 2009-ish. Um, now, yeah, can, can you tell me what was the genesis or the origin story of the bands, knowing that you've been with it the entire time? Yeah, yeah. So I started this band when I was a junior in college. Um, I had, when I was in high school, that was the first band that I was ever in. We had a high school band. We were horrible. There are some recordings that are out there, and if you have one of those, you should destroy it. They it's were terrible. YouTube. Is it on YouTube? They're, they're, they're probably, we, we've tried to get some of it taken down. Um, it was so bad. But um, so, yeah, I started out in high school playing, and that was the, the first taste at, you know, playing live music and leading in corporate worship. And then when I was in college, my first two years of college, I worked for another gospel group, and that was the first time that that was 2007, 2008. That was the first time that I had done the whole, you know, I was in college, but every week, I was getting on a tour bus and going somewhere through the summers. We would tour extensively. Um, and even I would fly a lot. So I would fly to meet the band that I was working for. And um, so that was the first real taste of being a traveling musician. And so I did that. And then in 2009, I decided, hey, I want to start my own um, bluegrass band. That's just all about Jesus. And so that's what we did. And we never, even at that point, we never intend, I never dreamed that we would still be here 14 years later, but yeah, so 14 years later, we're still here, we're still doing it. And um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the genesis of it started as a, as a band uh, when I was in college, just some friends and we thought, man, we'll get together and play in some local churches. And the first time that they asked us to play at our county fair here in the county that I live in, we thought we were a really, really big deal, man. Yeah. We thought we had made it. Yeah, you did. Obviously, you made it in a county. That's awesome. I've never played a county fair. That's awesome. That's great. No, I just have a my so my only concept of like a county fair in like the Midwest of America is what I've seen on TV in probably way too dramatic TV shows. So I'm really enjoying it because I'm just imagining like streamers and fairy lights and balloons and you guys standing up there killing it on stage. Would have been amazing. Well, you know, I've seen those um, scenes on, on on TV movies and stuff where they did the whole county fair thing, and they're pretty accurate. I oh, mean, really? we've got the light hanging up, and we're under a big tent, and we actually we we still do it every year. That's one of our hometown shows. We do two hometown shows here at our home base a year, and that is one of them. And they've got the tent, they got the lights hung up. There's plenty of funnel cakes and corn dogs, and you know, us Americans, we love our deep fried food, and we I'm deep fry everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. pride is great, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Australia also grabbed that, so I get that. Awake my soul and sing Shake off the cloud of night Arise and bless your King Who's robed in morning light Oh, bless the Lord who wakens you With life and breath and mercies new His glories now implore you to Awake my soul and sing I would love to know about your most recent album, It Never Gets Old. Obviously, it's been out for a few months now, but tell me about the heart behind it. When you were creating this album, what is it that you wanted to want it to make? Yeah, so, you know, this album came out June 23rd, and but it's been an album that has really, I think, been in the works for a few years um, because two albums ago, we did an album of nothing but old hymns of the faith. We did that. And then we did a Christmas album. And so for about three and a half years now, we've just been taking original songs 
that we fell in love with and we've been setting them back and waiting to record an album like it never gets old. And so even though it's a new album, it feels like that we've been making it for a long time. And really what the album, what was crazy was after we got all the songs done and all the tracks were laid down and we were listening back through the mixes, we realized that every single song was a song that spoke to a certain season that we had walked through individually in our lives and really just how the gospel has informed the life that we live. And so the album is really, it's, I feel like we always say, oh, it's the best album we've ever done. Or that's our favorite. The new album is your favorite album. But um, this one really is something special. Um, There's a lot of songs that are just really, really personal on it. Yeah. Now I was listening um, to it before and I could hear that. And you talk a lot about like family relationships as well as your faith which I thought was really beautiful, how it all weaves together. And I am not, I'll be the first to say, I'm not super educated in the bluegrass genre, but what I what I heard and felt from your music was nearly like what you were communicating. I could feel it in the music. It's like part of the heart of what you guys do. And the sound of the bluegrass that you make is like the heartbeat of the bands and what you want for your kids and for your community. Um, it yeah. sounded like something at home, like so- something that was safe and secure at home, but has gone so far out into the world, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what we hope for that. that that's really what we want our music to be is you described it perfect. We should get you to write the liner notes for the next album. Um, yeah, that. that was great. But yeah, we always say, I've said this for years. I think that bluegrass music, um, and acoustic music in general is just a very honest form of music. Like there's not any smoke and mirrors. All you hear is the wires and the wood, the instrument, and then the heart and the soul from the person that's playing that instrument. And so in terms of communicating the gospel through that form of music, it's, I think it's just one of the most perfect forms of music to use to communicate the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. I am um, something I also appreciate is that, and I hear it in your music, is that there because there are no smoke and mirrors, and you don't have well, there's production, but you don't have like the extra synth or doof doof beats and all that sort of stuff, which would be fa- a fascinating album in itself, merging them together. But um, because of that, you can tell um, as musicians and as vocalists just how in sync you guys are, but also how good you are because one note wrong or slightly pitchy and you would be able to tell. Um, and clearly you guys, it, like, it comes from not just practice but a camaraderie, which is something that when Brian was chatting to me about this, he, he really highlighted like how close you and your other band members are. Um, and I love yeah, that. You can that. Is, yeah, we are we're one big family um, and we've been like that for years. We always say that through the years there have been different members that have, you know, came and they've gone. And, um, but we've always said anybody that walks on our tour bus, um, and they're, they're working with chosen road, they are a part of our family and we live life together. We pray for each other. We walk through valleys of life with each other. Our families are really close. We all have kids at home right now under the age of two. And, uh, so we're all learning how to be parents together. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, Wow. That is incredible. What an amazing, chaotic, beautiful season. I appreciate it probably doesn't seem beautiful when you've had no sleep. Waking up at 2 a.m. Thought I heard the baby crying again I lay there a minute Wondering if it's a dream I roll over to reach for you But you're already down the hall in a room Rocking her in your arms Till you both fall asleep Oh, that's what God looks like to me. I want to ask you about your passion for revitalizing churches. Um, mm-hmm. My understanding is that you, you like as a band in some like you've partnered with the North American Mission Board, um, part of the Southern Baptist Church, 
And mm-hmm. I, I was reading through an, about how like you pr- provided um, a song for a podcast and you've heard countless stories from these pastors that are like struggling to hang on about how like hearing the music and having a safe space to share like their honest story and their struggles and their victories has really helped people. Where does your passion for revitalizing churches come from? Yeah, so we it's been some of the most gratifying work that we have been able to be involved in. And it started about eight years ago, the North American Mission Board, they reached out and they said, hey, would you all mind helping us encourage pastors that are laboring in declining churches across North America? And who would say no to that, right? Yeah. We were like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we were all Southern Baptist guys, so we knew of the North American Mission Board. We never worked closely with them. and um, But I said, yeah, so what does it look like? And they said, well, we want you all to record a song um, that we're going to send out to pastors to encourage them. And so we did, and the song was called International Harvester, and the listeners, they can go back and hear that. And so it's just been amazing. We hear story after story of how a guy, a pastor will hear that song and they'll be like, I was ready to to just throw in the towel and quit. I was ready to walk out of the office this week and just say, I'm done. And they say, but I listened to that song and encouraged me to go through another day um, to keep on mission for Christ and, and, and keep on working in the kingdom. And so, yeah, so on this new album, there's a song called One Willing Soul. And that's the one that is the theme song for a podcast. Yeah. And it's, it's called the Rural Pastor Podcast, and they reached out to us about a year ago, and they asked if we would write them a song to specifically encourage pastors in small town America. And we jumped at the idea because we all come from small town America, mm-hmm. and um, we live in the coal fields of Southern West Virginia, where the coal industry at one time it was big and it was booming, and now it's kind of dried up. And so there's been a, a lot of people that have moved away, and it's just a lot of economic depression, um, a lot of oppression, people that are just, that have turned, they don't have jobs. And so they've turned to substance abuse and they've turned to all these other outlets. And it's just a really, really sad thing. And there are churches that we sang in as a band 14 years ago that they're not open anymore. They've been turned into restaurants. They've been turned into nightclubs. And so it was easy for us to sit down and write that song. And we just kind of wrote it as a matter of fact, there was a there's a church about a mile from my house while we were writing that song. I was envisioning that church in my mind because just before we started writing it, that church had went through a revitalization slash replant process where um, the original church was down to just a handful of members. There was another church on the other side of town that they had ran out of room and they were just busting at the seams with people and they needed a new building. And so instead of building a new building, they merged with this other church that was dying and they brought new life to that church building and they brought new life to that community that that church is in, not the community that I live in. And so I visualized that church and the work that God seen God do there. And so, yeah, it has been amazing to see how God can use something as small as a song Mm -hmm. to make such an impact in someone's life, to encourage them to keep on for the kingdom. Um, Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing that we've been able to witness. Yeah. Uh, Purely from an outsider's point of view, can I just say, to you and also like your bandmates and families, everyone involved. Thank you for loving the church so well when it's really uncomfortable and you and you never know as well like what the result is going to be. Thank you for just like seeing. It's easy to see the big things but not to see the small things and I love that you guys just gave what you had and God's just blessed it and used it. It's really beautiful. Yeah, and it, it has nothing to do with us. It's just how big our God is. He can take something so small and use it to make an eternal impact um, in someone's life on a, on a community, on a a body of believers. And we've gotten to do some really cool things, plan some really cool stages, travel all around the world. But the, and I don't say, I'm not just saying this just because we're on this podcast, but I say this anytime I sit down with somebody, the most meaningful work that we've done as a band has been through our relationship with, church replanters in the North American Mission Board. We found, here's a cool story. So just last week, we just kind of got all this wrapped up. Um, There's a church that was one of the very first churches that we ever played at out of state. It was in Orlando, Florida. 
And it was in a community that this this pastor, he's been there now for 30, about 30 years. His dad was the pastor of this church for 40 years before him. So two generations, right? But the demographic of, of the neighborhood just kind of changed and the church just they weren't able to meet the needs of the people that were kind of moving into the neighborhood. And so their church was down to like six members and he called and they were not a Southern Baptist church, no affiliation with Southern Baptist at all. And he was like, I don't know what to do. He was like, I'm committed to keeping the doors of this church open. And he's like, even if there's just one person sitting in that pew, in a pew, I'll keep continue to preach the gospel to that one person. He said, but I've got to do something. He said, I, I just can't, we, something's got to change. And so I was able to introduce him to the church replant team at the North American Mission Board. And uh, now there is a Hispanic church that was already in that neighborhood that was planted a few years ago. They needed a church building. And uh, now they're moving into that building. And so that church will continue to have life the legacy that that pastor and his father have left behind, it will continue on. And the, those kind of stories like that, that's bigger than music. Oh, I love that. And I love how it crosses denominations and cultures because we are one church. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, I have a few quick questions for you, but before I jump to that, I have one. It could be slightly deeper. It may not be. You can take it however you like. But if you could go back to 2009, right before you released your first album with Chosen Road, what would you tell yourself knowing what you know now? I would tell myself not to try so hard. I relate to that. Um, just remember that your I would say, Jonathan, your identity is in Jesus Christ. And you cannot make anything happen, no matter how bad you want it. We can't make things happen. Only God can do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just tell myself just, be faithful to him. Don't worry about everything else. And his will is the only thing that matters in life. So, yeah. And I give that advice to a lot of, if I talk to younger artists or uh, musicians, they're trying to figure out, you know, what they want to do in their life. And they say, I want to you know, be a musician and I want to you know, be a gospel singer or whatever. I'll tell them, I'm like, you can want that. But the reality is, is that also has to be God's will and his plan for your life. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because because we need we need pastors out there. We need teachers. We need police officers. We need people in the healthcare industry that are Christians. And so it, you can want all those things, but it has to be God's will for your life. You plant the seeds in the ground. Though the fields have long been brown But Lord, when will your harvest come in? You're giving all you've got to give In the place where you've been sent But will this labor make much difference in the end? Will no one ever know? Sometimes you feel so all alone Like the prophet Jeremiah You may be the one to go To the dying and the broken With a message of hope To that church on the corner Of that forgotten little town With a room of empty peers Where is love? still be found you may never know of all the seeds you sow but it just takes one willing soul to make him know popcorn questions okay popcorn questions random things that maybe a fan would ask you or i'm just curious about honestly number one the album before this was a Christmas album. What is your favorite Christmas carol? My favorite Christmas carol is going to be, think about that for a second. I've got a lot of favorite Christmas songs, but I'm trying to think specifically of a Christmas carol that I love. Um, I would probably say, Oh, come let us adore him. That's my favorite. Beautiful. Love that. Okay. Number two. You record bluegrass music. If you could record an album in any other genre, you don't have to be good at it, but you probably are. 
what would it be and why? <laughs> it would be country music. Yes. Yeah. That would be so Which good. is a cousin of bluegrass, so it's really not fair, but yeah. But I love country music. Totally counts. There's a market for it, and I can hear that. I like that. Nice. Okay. Last one. What is your funniest slash most embarrassing moment on stage that you can share publicly? That I can share publicly? That's the tough one. That's the tough <laughs> one. Oh, man. That I can share publicly. There's been so many of them, but I don't know if I if, – oh, man. Man, I'm trying to think of one that I could – The so, the funniest thing that's happened to me, and this could be public, you might want to edit this out. <laughs> but, uh, but so I, I have a really bad habit for walking on stage sometimes and forgetting to make sure that my pants are zipped after I get off the bus. Yeah, and it's, it's embarrassing. Tough. It's embarrassing. It's especially, especially when someone comes up to you because the guys, see, we're all pranksters and we have a lot of fun on the road. And so they won't tell me on purpose. And they'll wait to see if anybody else is going to tell me. So, so then somebody will come up to the merch table at the end and be like, hey, your, your pants were unzipped. The whole like, concert, oh. you poor thing. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. That's rough. That's rough. Um, I can appreciate that your bandmates will get a kick out of that, though. <laughs> oh, we we have we have a true sense of humor. We, we have a really, really good sense of humor. The whole bus. We, we, we pull pranks on each other every single week. What's the, we have what's a lot the, of fun. What's the funniest, almost random prank that comes to mind? Some of them can can almost get unsafe at times. So we have a really <laughs> bad habit of giving each other's phone numbers out to people. And so oh, dude, we totally, oh, we totally shouldn't do that. We totally shouldn't do that. But, yeah, we have a really bad habit. Like if we know that that we've got like a super fan and they would, and they're like if they're wanting to talk to us and they just won't leave us alone, we'll tell them, we'll be like, well, you should call, you know, here's Tyler's phone number. You can call him and talk to him. And then a week later, Tyler gets a call from this person and he has no, uh, no idea. So we don't do that all the time, but we'll kind of spread those pranks out. So then that like, it'll happen to somebody and then it'll kind of die down. And then That's a little bit later, somebody will be like, man, I got this weird phone call. So, yeah. That's incredible because I can also imagine any of you that happened trying to be really nice to the fan and saying, really appreciate your support. Please never call me again. <laughs> well, yeah, and sometimes you get people, sometimes they, they did that to me a while back and there was a lady that I just could not get off the phone and you don't want to hang up on her, but like she just was, she was going to talk all day. I'm imagining that. That's amazing. Oh, it has been such a delight to chat with you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica. We appreciate everything that you do for Christian music and for the kingdom. And it was a joy to be with you today. Mama, pull me closer. Tell me once again The story of a Savior born To save all men It never gets old It never gets old Years give way to running Lost and on my own story of forgiveness brings this wayward home It never gets old It never gets old Thank you so much, Jonathan, for joining me, for sharing your story, your passion for bluegrass and your passion for the local church. It was a real privilege and I'm so glad we could make that happen. Friends, you can connect with Chosen Road right now. Their website is chosenroadmusic.com. Meanwhile, you can connect with them on Instagram at ch official chosen road. Their album, It Never Gets Old, is out right now on all good streaming platforms. So if you love bluegrass or you think that you're going to fall in love with it, go and check it out right now. And please make sure that you tell Jonathan and the crew how much you appreciated hearing their story and their passion. It was really, really cool. Friends, I want to say thank you again for supporting this episode, for sharing in another life-giving story. 
If you would like to continue to help us release the rest of our episodes over the course of this year and help us cover production costs, you are more than welcome to do that. It costs us $32 US to release one audio episode or $64 to do the audio and video together if you like seeing this on YouTube. So if you would like to support an episode or if you would like to just like give a little bit to help us get there, we would love that because we want to get these out to you as soon as possible. The link to do that is in our show notes. It is also at our website at betweenyourmepod.com. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it. Um, meanwhile, we also have merch available. So if you'd like to support us in that way, go and pick up a T-shirt or a sticker, something nostalgic and fun or a logo tee so everyone knows how much you love Between You and Me. That would be cool too. Again, the link is in our show notes or at our website. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this episode. Please make sure that you are subscribed on your favorite podcast platform uh, so that as soon as our next episode drops, which will be soon, you will get it. Thank you so much for being here, friends, for believing in life giving conversations and in the power of music. I will see you very soon with a new episode featuring an iconic Aussie singer named Gary Pinto. I will tell you why I'm so excited about that in our next episode. Until then, here's to hope. Your faith is a substance of things unseen. My hope will rise in the mystery. And I'll see. I'll see. When I'm faced with the enemy's lies Or in the shadow of every giant I'll see, I'll see I say thanks for the things you're doing I say thanks for the things you've done I say thanks for the way you're moving I say thanks before the battle's won And I will praise you in the middle of the storm Cause you've been faithful Right.